Guys, we got a problem and we got to talk. So the questions come up a lot about teaching English and a lot of, I've seen a lot of people on Facebook, a lot of people on the Reddit forums, a lot of people just in different types of forms, even on my videos and other videos I've looked at in the comment section. And everybody's asking, when can we come back? And a lot of these people are asking because they want to be a teacher or they want to come live in Vietnam and be a teacher. Today, I want to talk to you about what we're going to have to expect with Vietnam in the coming years after this pandemic is kind of over with and Vietnam opens back up. What's going to happen to us teachers? So today I have a video I recorded a couple weeks ago and I never got to editing. So I'm putting it together and that's what we're going to talk about today. And I just had to because the location was so stupid that I, I it had to be used. Respect the location that I've done this for you guys. And it took me actually an hour and a half to walk to this spot. So I thought it was kind of funny. On what we found so we're going to talk about being a teacher over there and what to expect in the coming years for being a teacher what to be ready for and what to expect so no further ado let's get into the video all right so for the teachers and because this news might not be the best i thought we sit by the toilet i've been able to talk to three well three higher up people one of them being a ceo two of them being way upper management in three different schools in vietnam and what's been going on is confirmation through these people that I've talked to is that schools are starting to suffer. They are about 30 to 50% capacity in regards to their own teachers. And I also confirmed this with a friend of mine that's also a teacher that they are at about a 50% capacity. So what does that mean? This is great news if you are in Vietnam right now probably and you're certified to be a teacher out there. A couple things going on here. This is going to be more towards Western teachers than it is any other teachers that I'm talking about. Schools are now starting to focus Focus their hiring on Filipino teachers, which is not a bad thing. Filipino teachers do their job, right? But they are requiring Filipino teachers be certified with the TEFL uh, and also have an English teacher degree. Is they're starting to hire Filipino teachers, so the Filipinos usually working more hours per month, and the salary is not as high as it would be for, let's say, a native Western speaker, or somebody from America or Canada or Australia, per se. This is starting to really bring down a lot of hiring for Western people, and a lot of people that go to Vietnam that aren't certified, that don't have degrees, you normally back in the day would make more than a Filipino would anyways, just because you were from like America or Australia or something like that. And with the government starting to crack down on business visas and a lot of fake stuff going on with permits and whatnot, this means that backpackers trying to you know make a few extra bucks on the side are gonna have a little harder time. Not saying it's going away, but it is gonna be a little harder time to go there. And on top of that, schools are also starting, and this has been confirmed through a friend of mine that's actually CEO of a big school, have said that they're starting to, they as in schools, are starting to hire teachers online, abroad. They're focusing their hiring on Americans and Australian people. And the salaries are a little less, obviously because you're not there, and they don't have to pay benefits, they don't have to pay for any taxes. And what does this mean for you as a teacher? It's starting to get limited. And if you aren't certified and you're trying to just backpack to Vietnam, and this is obviously when things get back to normal. Now this means it's gonna be much harder for us to get jobs competitively going to Vietnam, meaning salary-wise. So when I left Vietnam, I was making, I'll share my salary. Well, when I was in the South, I was making between 50 to 60 million a month Vietnamese dumb. And I was working at higher end English centers or I was working directly with the high school and I worked for UIT University in Saigon. When I was in Hanoi, Lai Cho, Lao Cai, up there, I was making more of the 75 to 80 million a month. And the salary is a lot more in the north for Western people. So if you could deal with the rain and the cold. So ideally, if you are gonna come to Vietnam to be a teacher, and I'm gonna do a video on this in a couple of weeks, talking about how to become a teacher out here, the best way to do it, where you get the hookups for the jobs. But you wanna have some kind of four-year bachelor's degree, and you have a TEFL. And I'll talk more in detail about this, but don't get a sales in Vietnam. Schools like ILA are trying to sell these on the Western teachers. You do do not need a CELTA. Repeat, you do not need a CELTA in Vietnam. It is in their government paperwork. You do not need it. If a school's telling you you need a CELTA, they're, they're ridiculous. Now, if you have a CELTA, that's perfectly fine. It will override the TEFL, you'll be okay. But past that, have a good CV, man, and sell yourself. It's gonna be the best thing. So getting news from the American Embassy from people that I know that work there. The Embassy, in regards to doing visas for Vietnamese people, this is kind of way outside, but this does reflect teaching English, is that American Embassy and Australian Embassy, a friend of mine confirmed this as well, that knows somebody within there, so I don't know if it's true or not for Australia, but it is for America, are these embassies are no longer accepting islands, certificates, as legal English 
acceptance for a visa processing. So what's happening with American Embassy, this is as far as I'm gonna go because I only know about American Embassy, is you do need to have an IELTS as a Vietnamese person, but they will re-examine you. 60 to 70% of their IELTS scores that they're getting, like the actual certificates, are fake. And you can check this yourself. On your IELTS, there's gonna be a little ID score on the bottom right or on the back of it. If you go to the British Council's website, you could verify your IELTS is real or not. And this is the first thing the American Embassy does. They don't even look at the score, they just verify it's real. And if it's real, then they look at it, they're like, cool, let's go to do the quick test. So what does that mean again for teachers is, our skills as being English teachers in Vietnam is becoming less and less valued. These schools, these centers, and I don't want to call centers out for being bad. These schools really focus on giving people certificates, islands, uh, CELTAs. Uh, you know, they have all these like kid programs and whatnot. Those are no longer going to be a valid for countries like America or Australia. And I don't know how much this is going to spread. Like if Canada is going to catch on to this. Canada was actually out there about four years ago where the uh, International School of Canada was giving out fake high school diplomas and sending the kids to Canada. And Vietnam's getting caught with a lot of lies. And it's starting, it's already affected the visa process. You guys have heard about the business visa thing. Those are just Vietnamese lies. Those weren't Western people trying to cheat the system. These were Vietnamese cheating in the government going with it. And we also have now the islets being faked out. So there's a lot of shit going on. And last year, I think Donald Trump's administration called out Vietnam president for faking the VD value like China did three years ago. So there's a lot of faking going on in Vietnam. And I know that's kind of a pun in itself, but it's happening. It is catching up to Vietnam. So if you are, my advice, if you are going to go to Vietnam being a teacher, my advice to you is have a nest egg, have some extra money, and don't depend totally on it. Do something else while you're in Vietnam. Man. Be a YouTuber, be a photographer, be a, there's a, there's a guy called Vietnam Meets Dustin. He's an actor in Hanoi for TV shows in Vietnam. Like there's other things we can do. So my advice for you, if you're coming out, your only skill is to be an English teacher and you are certified to be that, branch out a little. If you are not certified to be that teacher, don't expect it to happen too easily anymore. And after this whole pandemic's over, the border's open, I really don't think you're gonna have a lot of fake teachers anymore. Or at least very few of them. Either way, I think that's good for today, guys. Hopefully me and Hoodie Pot explained enough to you that you understand what's going on with the whole teacher situation. But till then, guys, thanks for watching. The video helped you. If it was informative, if you like it, you want to follow along, hit that subscribe button. Check out my Spanish playlist if you want to see me go along and learn the Spanish along the way. And smash that like button if you liked it. Smash that button if you've ever just hated a honeypot in the video. And till then, guys, I will see you again.